Hello everyone, today, we're diving into the Tencent Hun Yuan SRPO, that's Semantic Relative Preference Optimization for Image Generation, plus, we'll compare it to Flux Base Model. First up, what is SRPO? It's not a standalone model, it's a training recipe built on top of Flux, tweaking the whole diffusion process to align with what humans actually vibe with. We're talking photorealistic, aesthetic images that just hit different. Tencent's Hunyuan team cooked this up and made some serious improvement for image generation using this Flux Fine Tune model. So, why should you care about SRPO? Let me break it down with some advantages. Number one, it's crazy good at realism. Like, we're talking a three times boost in what people rate as excellent images, jumping from 70.8% to 73.2% in human eval tests. That's not just a flex, it's a game changer for getting crisp, lifelike results without weird artifacts or overdone colors. Two, it's fast and efficient. You can fine tune this model in under 10 minutes on a small dataset. Think less than 1,500 images. No need for crazy compute power or days of training like some other methods. Oh, and one more thing. SRPO's got this thing called direct align which keeps the early messy stages of image generation super stable. That means no wonky distortions when your image starts coming together. Plus, it's got this smart reward system that's text conditioned, so you can tweak styles or details on the fly with prompts. It's like telling your AI, yo, make it more cyberpunk, and it just gets it. And unlike some models that cheat the system with overly vibrant colors or fake sharpness, SRPO keeps it real avoiding that reward hacking nonsense. With tools like comfy UI workflows and quantized checkpoints, like 8-bit GGUF files that make it easy to run on your rig. Check out the links in the description for Tencent's GitHub repo and hugging face pages to grab the pre-trained models. All right, so let's talk about downloading this model. You've got a few options. First off, you can grab the full models from the Tencent SRPO hugging face repo. Just head over to the Files and Versions tab, and you'll see all the saved tensor files for this model right there. The full model is a hefty 47 gigabytes. Another way to use it is with a lighter, trimmed down version, the SRPO4 Comfy UI Hugging Face Repo. This one specifically creates model files, including GGUF quantized versions that are perfect for running on a regular consumer PC in Comfy UI. So, check out the files page. You'll see FP8 models available here. Super convenient, and they're only about 11 gigabytes. You've also got GGUF files for this model in Q4 and Q8 quantized versions. And if you want even more options, there's another hugging face repo with quantized models ranging from Q2 all the way up to BF16. I'll drop all those links in the video description below. Let's get into playing around with this. For this run, I'm gonna go with the SRPOQ8GGUF file. Just pop those GGUF files into your models folder, specifically under the UNET folder. That's where all your GGUF quantized models go. You'll need the Comfy UI GGUF custom node to load these models, and I've got my SRPOQ8GGUF file right here. In Comfy UI, here's a basic text to image workflow using this model. As you can see, we're loading the GGUF quantized model right here. Optionally, you can also use the diffusion model safe tensor files for this, called Flux1 Dev SRPO. The easiest way to load this, it's basically the same method you'd use for a regular Flux model. You can use the same clip loader and VAE model files as you would with Flux. Now I'm going to compare how this looks against the standard Flux model, plus others like Flux Crea and the newer QN image models. We'll use the same prompts and settings across the board to see the differences. Let's run a quick test with this basic model first, just to make sure everything's working. And there you go. We've got a pretty nice close-up shot of a young girl smiling. Just look at her skin, and her hair especially. Everything looks way better than the base Flux model. Way fewer artifacts, and no more of that weird plastic skin, especially for human portraits. The workflow I set up here is designed to compare different image generation models side by side with SRPO. We've got Flux Crea, Flux One Dev Base Model, 
and I've also thrown in the Quen image model. So four samplers total. I've got a compare node at the top two, using the same seed number, aspect ratio, and text prompt for all images. The first image I generated is of a girl visiting a store somewhere in Asia. I was aiming for an early to mid-90s style, and honestly, it turned out pretty nice overall. Next up is Flux Crea. Flux Crea tends to boost the coloration, like the white balance feels cranked up a bit. I see this happen a lot with Crea. The texture is definitely a step up from the base Flux model though. Now let's compare the base Flux model directly with SRPO. Again, you can see SRPO generated a very similar image to the base model. I think SRPO didn't add any new image datasets during training. Instead, it just fine-tuned the aesthetics and realism settings of the existing Flux 1 dev base model. Flux Crea, on the other hand, probably trained on different image datasets, which is why it generates such different results. Looking at this first comparison, the difference is huge. The base model is full of artifacts and that plastic skin look, while SRPO looks totally natural. The hair doesn't look like it's glued down with heavy gel. You can actually feel the texture, like it's got some dry, natural strands. And I didn't even upscale any of these. This is just the base portrait size. Now the Quen image model, it generated a really Quen style. It's not a bad image, but compared to SRPO, the aesthetic and realism just aren't as strong. Look at the text on the character's shirt. It's kind of awkward. And that belt? Way too shiny. It doesn't look like it's ever been worn. But with SRPO, the belt looks like real, used leather. It just feels more realistic. Honestly, Quen has a lot of heavy artifacts too, just like the base Flux model. So yeah, you can really see the difference here. I'll post this workflow in the description below. You can load all four models at once and compare them side by side using the same prompts, dimensions, and seed numbers. Everything's configurable. Next, I put SRPO into some actual workflows to see how it works alongside Flux Crea and Flux One Dev, and you can use it with Quen Image too. In this example, I'm using the Flux One Dev base model. You can throw in a LoRa if you want. This is a standard text to image setup. The first sampler is the Flux base model. See this guy standing here? His skin still has that heavy AI look. But check out the second sampler, which uses SRPO. The hair and the side of his face look way more natural, like how a real human should feel, texture-wise. Especially the hands. The first one has those classic fat fingers, but after the second sampler, the knuckles and fingers look totally normal. That second sampler, that's where I'm feeding in the latent data from the first group. I'm loading the SRPOGGUF file there. I also did a little math to align the dimensions and then generated the image with a light denoise setting around 0.3 to 0.4. Then I've got another group here for image upscaling. I feed the output from the second sampler into the upscaler, which refines those textures even more. I usually keep the denoise low for this kind of image to image generation. I don't want to change the image too much, just improve it. But you can see, after upscaling, all the textures get even better. Let me throw in a compare node here and run the upscaler again. You'll see there's still a noticeable difference between the image after the SRPO sampler and the final upscaled version. I'm also using the SRPO model in the upscaler. Here's the final result after upscaling. It's even more refined, with better aesthetics. The skin looks more natural, and you can even see some subtle wrinkles on the face, which really helps convey the character's age. For upscale denoise, I'd actually go even lower, like 0.15. That way, you keep more of the original image's character while just enhancing the texture and size a bit. So that's how I'm using it, or rather, that's how I like to use SRPO. It can definitely generate great images on its own, but if you've already got a workflow or another model you like, SRPO is perfect for refining the aesthetics and adding that extra layer of realism. All right, next step, I'm gonna remove the Flux 1 dev model and instead use the Quen image model for the initial generation. Let's see how well SRPO can refine the textures from a Quen-generated base image 
Up top, I've got the Quen image loader and sampler, all copied over from my other workflow. The nodes are basically the same. Once I've hooked everything up and made sure the workflow makes sense, we can start running it. Honestly, right now, most image generation models are pretty similar in quality. The real difference comes down to fine tuning for better aesthetics and realism. Here's another image I generated. First pass is with Quen, second pass is with SRPO. See the difference? The Quen version looks like a GTA character. After SRPO refines it, it looks way more like a natural human face. Even though it's not a close up, you can still see the overall aesthetic improvement after the second sampler. Now we're waiting for the refiner. And here it is Quen versus SRPO. Huge difference. The hairstyle, the face shape, GTA style character to something that looks like a real aesthetic human. And here's the upscaled version, even clearer, with the face brought up to the final dimensions. It's way better. You get way more facial definition. Let's try generating another image using the Quen model. This time, I'll go for a close up shot so we can really see the effect of SRPO as a refiner in the second sampler. And then again after upscaling. While that's generating, I'll group these SRPO nodes together to make the workflow a little clearer. Here's the first image from Quen. Then, we feed it into the second sampler with SRPO. You can immediately see the face texture is way better. The eyebrows, the eyeballs, the aesthetic and realism are just on another level. Now, let's wait for the upscaler to see the final result. Okay, here's the upscaled image compared to the output from the second sampler. Both are using the SRPO model. After upscaling, you get even more detail in the eyes. You can see the reflections. Plus, there are more subtle wrinkles and skin textures that make it look like real human skin. Let's have Quen AI generate another character prompt, this time a young lady, so we can compare the results after the male character. Here we go, another result. This time, it's a female character, a close-up portrait. The first pass is with Quen. You can totally feel that Quen style. I don't know how else to describe it, but when you see it, you just know it's from Quen. After the second sampler refines it with SRPO, way better texture on the face and especially the hair. I really like this part. It loses that plastic AI generated artifact look. And here's the third group, the upscaler. We're going up to 3000 pixels wide and you can see it adds even more texture detail to the face. The coloration on her cheeks and lips feels way more natural. Let's try pushing it even further with the ultimate upscaler. I'm gonna run it through a second upscale pass and see how it looks at 4000 pixels wide. Yeah, this time the lips look way more natural. They're not that bright plasticky red anymore. It's a massive improvement for Quen generated images. One other way I'm thinking of using SRPO to fix existing images that are just full of artifacts. At the start of the workflow, I switch the input to just load an image, any artifact heavy image you want to improve. Maybe you've got an old favorite you generated in Flux or another AI model that you wish looked better. SRPO takes that image, upscales it via latent space, basically doing an image-to-image -image generation. Here's the output from that heavily artifacted image of a woman. After SRPO, the face looks way better. And after upscaling, even better. You get more texture, and it just feels less like a plastic, AI-generated character. So yeah, that's it for this video. I just wanted to share how I'm using SRPO. Feel free to experiment with your own methods, but this is definitely the fastest and most effective way I've found to see the impact of the SRPO fine-tune. I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a nice day. See ya.